Hello, hello, and welcome to Quackalope, and today we're doing another Bladed Ones on Hallertau, designed by mm. Uwe Rosenberg, published by Lookout Games. And so, in Bladed Once, which is a segment that we've devised from our podcast, so if you haven't listened to the podcast, be sure to visit that. You can check it out in any of the platforms where you usually get podcasts. But we talk about our first impressions about a game, what we thought about that game, if it's a game that is ever going to come back to our table, if we enjoyed it, if we didn't enjoy it, and what that those overall first opinions were. So with Hallertown, this is going to be a kind of like a more Euro, Euro-based game from the famous Uwe Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. So so Dan, like in terms of the themes, right, what is what exactly are we doing in Hallertown? You're a farmer or a villager trying to build your farm, trying to build out your village, uh, growing crops, raising sheep, because what's a new Uwe Rosenberg game without what raising sheep? sheep? You need sheep. Uh, uh, it, you know, building your economy, uh, managing your, your resources, trying to collect victory points at the end. So, basically, like almost every euro that involves farming so far. <laughs> right. Great. Specifically, every Ewe Rosenberg game. Oh. That involves farming. And speaking of farming, like what are the what are the the game mechanics in this world? What are what should people expect? Sure, when you play a game of Holler Tower, you're going to expect to uh, have that general economic farming game that you that you have come to expect from Uwe Rosenberg. So what you're going to do be doing is you are going to be gaining resources using these worker cubes to place out on the big general center uh, village board, where you are going to then gain resources to either put down here or put in your fields, which are these little brown pieces that Jan had, and the other various resources that you have. There's things like barley and hops and um, rye. We decided this was rye. Yes. <laughs> and of course, sheep. Sheep. Super important sheep. And you're going to use those to develop your village. Part of something that you're going to have in front of you is this board that's over here which uh, as you build your village, you're gonna increase the number of workers that you can have, that you can place out into the board, and then you're also gonna score victory points as those move further and further out. So uh, the point of the game is to end the game with the most victory points, and mm -hmm. you do that by farming. And also by hand management, right? A little bit of what's in here is that you, we are going to be dealt Hand, uh, hand of cards of different types of decks. Each mm -hmm. deck being a little bit more complicated in how you will solve that deck, but usually those cards are going to have two types of requirements. You either have to meet the minimum that is being requested of you at the top in order to unlock the bottom, or whenever that arrow is here, you're gonna have to pay those resources away from your farm or your establishment mm -hmm. in order to gain those resources and basically get them up into the, into the, into the game. So in terms of the context, we all learned this game together, or we played this mm -hmm. game together for the first time, right? Yes. Our lovely <laughs> rules expert here, Dan, learned this game for us. the only one that reads rule books around here. <laughs> yes. You, you were the one who read the, <laughs> this. When we played Tekenu, I it's, read that one. It's been two for two it's, so far. It's a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> so how was learning this game, Dan? Like, how was the rule book? What, what, what was that experience like? Uh, it, it was actually... Not not too bad. I mean, and okay. it, you know, as with so many Euro games, it comes down to what are the different resources, what are the different things you can do, and then what order do you do them in, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And the and bottom line, most points wins. So yeah. it, it's really not that hard to learn. In fact, the rule book, the first half of the rule book is the game. The second half of the rule book is the appendix mm -hmm. for because yeah. every yeah. single one of these cards yeah. is unique, and in case you get. Uh, you know, confused or bogged down by by the the uh, the type of cards or the nomenclature, the iconography. The it's always going to be there. The iconography. Nomenclature. <laughs> nomenclature. It's, you can look it up right yes. there, and, and, and everything you got. Which is super appreciated. There are yes, nine. I, I really like that. There are nine pages in the appendix wow. that explain how every card works. There are like three hundred and fifty to four hundred cards. It's it's a, yeah. It's you a, definitely there's need a lot it. of cards, and it's good that it's in there. And mm -hmm. so the way that this game will work on a turn-by-turn -turn basis is super simple. Uh, everybody is given, as Will said, an amount of workers. Workers are represented by these cubes, and there will be a board in the center of the table that has multiple, multiple, multiple actions, similar to like something like uh, a Feast for Odin, where you have yeah. a, a plethora right. of things to do, and you'll decide to place workers there. And similar as well to Feast for Odin, depending on how many players have been to that space before, 
that space is gonna be a little bit more expensive. You're gonna have to put more workers if you were the last one there. So this type of Euro game really does incentivize first player mm -hmm. so that you can start mm -hmm. kind of maneuvering everything around. However, one important thing about this game is that not all workers leave the board always. Right. There's a like a shared pool of cubes that you're gonna be drawing from all the time and workers that are going to persist in the game no matter what. Uh, the only thing that gets elevated is one of the three levels of workers that could be there. So it starts adding a lot of crunchy decision making inside mm -hmm. of it. But in terms of learning, I think it was pretty straightforward for at least for me as a as a, as a first time teach like i think you uh, as, as usual you did a great job especially yeah. in this game yeah. oh he taught so he taught well because he <laughs> didn't well. win yeah oh my this god guy. that was fantastic like <laughs> excellent job dan i'm so proud of you i work for you jan who, who, who i work won? for you jan? oh that doesn't matter oh, okay. the important <laughs> thing is that dan didn't win because okay. he taught the game uh what about you will how did this feel t learning Learning, uh, I have to admit, when we first started, when everything was placed in front of me, which all these components that we've shown you are... This is like half of it. <laughs> like a, a quarter. For, <laughs> a, it's half of it, and B, all of these things are in front of the player. This isn't even the central yeah. area. These are all in front of the player. Each player gets so when it was, all this. So when it was put in front of me, I was a little overwhelmed with cards that I didn't know what they did and all of this sitting in front of me. However... Once Dan started talking it through, it was very teachable. Very, very teachable and very easy to learn. Mm -hmm. So going on that same route, now into our overall opinions of the game, right? Um, I have to say that the first thing that I found quite fetching about this game, or at least what attracted to me about it was how the farming worked. Because it, it was trying to create a simulation of farming that I, I haven't seen before. Yeah, it and it so simulates it, it. Yeah. <laughs> It simulates it very, very. What? Well, that's a good word. It's wow. fetching. It's attractive. It's interesting. Wow. wow. It's a movie reference. <laughs> it simula It simulates it very well too, because as you place down your I'm field you, people tokens, people in the comments will get that. Yeah. As you place Selfish. down, as you place down your field tokens, you can. You're gonna place them on a certain spot on the board, but if you use them or don't use them, they're going to either evolve or fall fallow as you use them, and they can, uh, as they grow up, you can uh, get more resources. Each level on here provides you a certain number of resources that you'll be able to spend. So it actually recreates how farm fields work in the real world quite, quite well. Because you can cultivate those things that it gives you, depending on how long or when yeah. you wait until that soil is perfect enough, then you can cultivate that specific type of resource into more of that amount. But if you don't wait enough, you're just gonna get diminishing and more diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. So it's this game of waiting until the perfect time to like plant the seeds, let them grow, and then make the most out of it out of all of that. So yeah, that for sure was one of my favorite mm -hmm. things, uh, at least from even before opening the box itself. What did, what did you guys think about, and, and Dan, I'll, I'll ask the, you this question first, like what did you think of the overall worker placement in conjunction with the economic and tableau building that you're doing? So my first uh, comment on the worker placement, for all the great little bits and pieces, I can't believe they didn't spring from meeples. I mean, really? Yeah. Blue, it's, blue worker cubes, yeah. Blue cubes, come on. I think, I, think it was, I think it was just a way. I'll pay an extra dollar fifty. It was just an easier way to <laughs> move them out. I paid $80 for the game. I'll pay another dollar That is for true. Meeples. It is an expensive one. <laughs> uh, I, I think it was just done so that you can grab them easy and move them off the board because you're just kind of displacing of them. cubes all the time. Out of all the <laughs> components, the blue cubes are the most. So maybe, yeah, it was a consideration on how they would be able to move in. But that wasn't the, 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 right. That wasn't like the main thing you wanted to talk about. <laughs> no, that was just a gripe I had. <laughs> uh, gotta get those jabs in somewhere. Um, no, I, I I liked it because you know with it, again kind of like the you know last game we talked about you can usually do any action it's just gonna cost you more. Yes. You know if you really want to get there you either need to make sure you're going early or or you know spend the workers to get it. Uh, so so from that aspect I liked that you didn't feel too boxed out but yet it still it, it boxes you out enough because it's very delicate re resource management aspect that that it does make for some really crunchy decision making like mm -hmm, you said you mm -hmm. can't just throw everything at whatever you want you gotta you gotta pick and choose and choose carefully i would say however unlike the previous game that we talked about this game if you don't get in there in time you 
can't take that action at all because they will fill up. Right. Yes. There are only three levels of. By the way, in case you don't watch every video, the previous game we're talking about is Praga <laughs> Kaput Regni, which we just did a video. Yes. <laughs> but in <either> context, <laughs> everything is cross promotion today. Lord Almighty. Um, yeah, so, uh, the thing I would say about the worker placement in this game is that versus other Euro games that I played where every action feels independent and important in its own in itself, everything here felt a little bit redundant. Like, it was a variation of a basic action that I had on another side mm -hmm. of the board, but a little bit lesser sure. or less important, or it didn't feel quite as interesting. And I think, in terms of worker placement spots, spots purely, I would have preferred a system where you go first, you get the higher benefit, second you get a lesser benefit, and third maybe you get lesser, and that the, all the actions were more substantial and more interesting or more dynamic in the way that they implemented. Because there were a lot of times that I didn't explore half of the worker placement spots because I just didn't have use for them. Well, part of that is the strategy that you developed sure, through sure, the game. Sure, sure, 100%. So, but I, I don't know that, that I necessarily agree with that. I think mm -hmm. that having the worker spots be what they are, just it just... Adding in those extra bits of, oh, if I go first, I get a thing plus. It just, mm. that would add to the crunchiness and maybe the little bit f more fiddliness of it. This, for all of its uh, stuff going on, this game isn't isn't very fiddly. So straightforward, straightforward and streamlined, right? It really is, it really and is. And super is quick playing. Yeah. I was surprised that we got this done like in an hour and a half between three players, yeah. maybe even play. less. Yeah. On a first yeah. play, yeah. it moves at it really such did. a quick pace. And you even yes. commented halfway through, like, I can't believe we're halfway through this. And I, <laughs> yeah. and I felt like we were doing things, though, you know? It didn't feel like we were just ramping up, like we were we had engines rolling. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it, it moved quick. And I think that has to do that there's not a lot of things to manage simultaneously in this one. Like versus what, like that game we just mm -hmm. talked about, Prague put right where you have multiple boards. Mm -hmm. Everything here is just dealing with resources. All yes. the resources. Right. You you have to know how many you have, how many you need for every single round. Yeah. And what do I mean with that? Well, this game is all about scaling up your line of production. And so the reason why you're scaling up your round of production is because of the rounds you're in. Yeah. Every time that there's a new round, there's going to be an opportunity so that you can make your village a little bit more profitable. Yep. And the way that you do that is by moving these pieces across a horizontal board ever more so to the right. But the way that you do that is by paying the resources that you've collected. So on, yeah, right on these tiles, they give you requirements. So, hey, you need, you're going to need uh, rye, you're going to need, what is this, barley? barley, barley, and then you're going to need flaxseed. Okay, perfect. Well, at the beginning of the game, super simple to do. You're just gonna need uh, one of each. One of each of those types of materials mm -hmm. and you're good. But third one round? Of any. One of any. One of one any. One of any. Then on the third round, uh-oh, you need three goods or two goods of two different types? Oh, but wait, the fourth round, you need three? And the fifth, you need four yeah. or five? It gets more expensive mm -hmm. as it goes along. And that's where the e economy system comes in because you have to figure out mm. how you're actually going to produce right. all these things. And there's obviously other methods that you're going to be able to use, like the rings here allow you to kind of circumvent all those materials and just basically bribe the construction <laughs> workers with gold. You're shiny. <laughs> and you're able to move that village farther ahead or that specific right. good production or, or good style of your village. But... I think that's one of the main reasons why the turn and the analysis paralysis in this game is so low, because you just have to focus on how do I make my resources grow exponentially throughout the entire game. Yeah. The one mm -hmm. element, and I really want to hear your thoughts about this, is the cards, the hand management portion of this, because it's not just resource mm -hmm. management, it's hand management. And it reminded me a little bit of viticulture and mm -hmm. the way that you're drafting and drawing tiles that you need specifically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well... I don't know that it reminded me about vit of viticulture all that much, but I that may just be because I either didn't play the card game correctly, mm -hmm. or I didn't get the cards that I needed for everything else that was going on. I had a I think I played down two or three cards throughout the entire game, and you guys had mm -hmm. six or seven. I just there was there wasn't really much going on in the cards for me, which. That's such a great one. That's like a that's a pun, right? There wasn't enough in the cards. It has double meaning. I mean, that's so good. There's True. also a pun on the front of the rule book here saying that uh, you <laughs> provide the local craftsmen with the goods they require by cultivating crops, breeding sheep, and literally 
playing your cards right. Hey, oh! Fun, fun, fun times from Lookout Games there. Um, the Lookout Games editors. Um, but yeah, so the card play I didn't really get into because I just, I was either, wasn't generating, like most of the cards I had at the beginning were sheep based. And the way that my game played out, I didn't have any use for sheep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Really weird in a Rosenberg game. But actually, you don't need your sheep throughout most of it. Because you're so, not feeding anybody. So I would enough. counter that thought, though, with most of your cards you just said were sheep-based. You didn't take a sheep-forward strategy. No, I didn't. And I think well, you the suffered sheep, for it in the long run. I potentially did, but the, in I my think, mind, I wasn't gaining enough from those sheep-based cards that it uh, made sense. It right. made more sense, like, in the beginning I had also a mix of sheep right. and hops-based things, and the mm. hops did eventually score me a majority of my points. So I, I think out of the card play system, you were the one that really focused on on the hand management, and you were able to put down a lot of it on the board. But it wasn't until late, because mm. early on I got frustrated because I hadn't played any cards, and I, was, I felt like I was missing something. Mm-hmm. And e- even, you know, I mean... Spoiler alert, jumping right to the what I played again and what did I think, you know, that that piece of it, right? Spicy. <laughs> like, oh, no. I, 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 I do want to play this again because I think there is more going on in the, those cards than any of us realized off the bat. And I think subsequent so plays would, would lead us to, if you manage your game in accordance with the cards that you have a little bit more carefully and a little bit more thoughtfully, I think that will blow the doors open on this game. That was the impression that I got because mm-hmm. the last couple of turns is when I really exploded in putting more cards down and I felt like I was a day late and a dollar short. Looking at things like, if I would have had these out a turn earlier, I'd be playing a different game right now and had I made a couple of different minor decisions, I could have done that. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. so it's, it's something that I want to explore again and explore a little bit more in depth uh, with with how those cards play into the economy of what you're doing. And that's why I said that it reminded me of Viticulture, because Viticulture is very similar. Viticulture is based on the cards that you're dealt, is how you play your strategy forward. Or at least that is my experience that I have had with Viticulture. Like, I know for a fact that as Jesse and I played, he really went into mill. Like, one of the first actions that is recommended for, for at least base game Viticulture is get the, the, the action that mills the deck as fast yeah. as possible. Because it gives you more opportunities to try and diversify or specify what type of focus you want to do mm. in this. And I think that in a, in a, I think this might be kind of commonplace now. Whenever you see a Euro with a bunch of different card decks, all multiple, and they kind of share the same things, uh, you're probably going to want to lean into the cards on that mm. particular Euro because that's going to be the right. focus of it or like the special sauce like you're saying. Right. Um, and another, and speaking of cards, similar to what we mentioned about other retail-based Euros, how to has all the variability that you're going to need in that game, period. And I really, really mm. appreciate that from, from yeah, publishers these days. there's a lot of variability. Because there's, we used four of the, what, ten possible decks, mm. right? Because you, you use four decks in a game, but two of the decks are interchangeable with four different versions of those two decks. Like, it's, it's there's, a, there's a lot of variability right there, I think. Yeah. And you can get to different levels of mm. complexity and, and strategy from that. And I think that's one of the main things that I think publishers are doing these days to compete with the big Kickstarters and things like that. They they give you everything you need at an accessible price point, and it includes all those extras that we get in games and Kickstarter. Which, They're already in the box. Which I love. I, I, I <laughs> freaking love. adore it. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of product, production value too, I think that this game did a really good job in how everything is laid out. Right? Other than these. <laughs> Other than the Just cubes. Spring the for cubes. some meeples. They fit in the box. They can't be that much more. Come on. <laughs> but it is absolutely beautiful, right? It, it also gives you that serenity of the of the, of the region that you're going for. Yeah. But ultimately, what did we think about this game? What did you enjoy this game? And would you play it again? Dan, you already well, told us. I already told you, so what do you think? Oh, wow. It's just throw, <laughs> throwing it on me. You know Dan. what? I'm just going to do a curveball. I'm going to throw it at you. You're going to throw it to me Whoa. because you already know what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> did I enjoy it? I had... I had... I had a time. I had a time. <laughs> I didn't. I played the game. It I, happened. I, I and played now the I'm game, not. and I well, <laughs> I'm not gonna go that far. I I did I, as I was playing it at the beginning while I was moving my village. I thought I was making good progress, and I felt I felt good about that. 
but later on when I realized, hey, maybe I need to be looking into these cards a little bit more, I started realizing, hmm, well, uh, whoops, missed out on that, and maybe that was my problem. So, I mean, everything fits, fits together very well, and it's clearly a good game. It's it work everything that we've said here. It works smoothly. It's good to play. It's crunchy. There are choices. It it's it, it is really well done. But I would still probably rather play Agricola than Hollertau. And so I probably would not play it again unless someone really really did want to play. Mm-hmm. And I would evaluate my strategies, change it up a little bit. But um, it's not something that I'm going to seek and, out. And <laughs> d- despite what I what I said about enjoying it and and wanting to play it again to, to explore some of those other things, I would definitely agree with you on the concept that that while you might not feel like you have no options because there's a lot of places you can go with your yeah. workers, it definitely I felt after one play at least, it feels like if you make a couple of missteps early on, you feel yourself having a hard time recovering from them later. Sure. Yeah. You definitely feel it on the next turn thinking, I feel like I'm behind right now. I yeah. feel like I'm, you know, backed into a little bit more of a corner, yep. you know, than otherwise. So. Something that we yeah. heard on, something that I heard early on in the game from the person who eventually won. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do you anything. Were co- you yeah. were complaining yeah. that you were fe- you felt yeah. like you were falling behind. You well, did. the house d- does a huge effect on players when you're mm-hmm. not able to it move does. because th- in order yep. to move the house, you need to move boulders that you requires a specific resource. Things. You need to move all of the different manufacturing processes that you have in yes. place. It's difficult to do, and if you mm-hmm. don't plan accordingly based on the requirements of each round and you see everybody else getting, because the house corresponds not just for victory points, because you get the victory points way later. It's about the workers. And in a worker placement game, you obviously, everybody always does that. You want all the workers. So when people start getting like three more workers, two more workers, five more workers than you, obviously you're going to start feeling constricted and you can't do much compared to everybody else, right? I think for me, what, I enjoyed this game. I, I did. I completely agree with both of your, uh, ex, you know, sh- expression of, of enjoyment of it, or at least, well, for Will it was more <laughs> meh, it, right? Which I agree with way. too, that's the thing. I agree yeah. with Dan, I agree with Will at the same time. It was a good experience, but it was also meh. And the reason for me why it's a little bit underwhelming is because it felt one note. Like this to mm. me felt like a pale ale, when what I wanted was a stout or something with more complexity and deeper richness, right? Mm. In terms of the flavor tone, <laughs> I'm trying to make things work in terms of theme. I'm sorry if I didn't do a good job. <laughs> either way, either way, like to me, this felt very one directional. It was get the resources and move your house. That was at least initially mm-hmm. the first, the the only winning or or uh, rewarding strategy that was in there. I understand and agree that the card play is essential in getting that house to move, but it's also about getting the house to move. Mm -hmm. It's not about going on a different direction and doing different things. And in such a saturated marketplace of euros, specifically my library, which is filled to the brim with euros, even though they might not seem like it on this channel, it really is, (laughs) I have other games I'd rather play. 100%. 100%. I, I, I would give you that. I mean, even in the Uwe Rosenberg catalog alone, you know, other than wanting to explore this a little bit more, I would rather play A Feast for Odin yes, or Agricola. As, as I, 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 haven't played said. A Feast, I haven't played A Feast for Odin yet, but you guys have talked about it, and it's on my list. It's just having the time to get it to the table. I just also, played it like a month ago. Man. Also, I'd probably also, I'd really want to try Nusfjord, which I've heard mm. is a really good game as well. And I think that's where, at, at the end of the day, that's where it falls on me. It's, it's, I don't even care about the Ew, Ro- Ew Rosenberg catalog. <laughs> <laughs> I care about my Euros. And will I ever pull this out? And I really don't think I would. Hmm. And that's sad because I really want a solid farming game. The only farming game I have currently in my library that I haven't played yet is Lowlands. And I'm super excited about that one because it has <laughs> sheep and water. Uh, also, yeah, not while well, not an Uwe Rosenberg game, an Uwe Rosenberg recommended game. In fact, he helped oh. with the development. Of it. Oh, oh, look at that! <laughs> I find that to be a very funny and specific uh, 
sentiment, you know. I want a farming game. <laughs> I do. I want it's a like, specific farming. Game. It's like the quarter suit of Euros, <laughs> and I feel like I'm not a gamer until I have a far, like a legit farming game. Uh, but ultimately, I we need would... to get you to play Agricola. I, I, why would you say that publicly? I've been trying to avoid. I've been trying to avoid saying this the entire time. Okay. Oh my God. I did enjoy this game. Would I play it again? Yes. Maybe. Whatever. You didn't hear what he just said. If you haven't yet, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave some comments, go to our website, go to our podcast, do something. But regardless, regardless of what you do, remember to do the important thing and remember that I have played Agricola. We'll see you guys next time.